get some more perspective on peatlands. For that, I'm joined in the studio by Dominic Jacques. He is an expert on peatlands at the Leibniz Institute of Freshwater Ecology and Inland Fisheries. Thanks so much for being with us here on Tomorrow Today. Okay, who is really to blame for all this damage to the peatlands? Gardeners? Um, not only gardeners alone are responsible. Um, peatlands are large-scale drained um, due also to other reasons. They are used for agriculture and um, they are used for forest activities. And um, But now uh, we change a little bit our mind on peatlands. We realize that uh, they fulfill different or important ecological functions. So um, we have a change now and we start to try to restore peatlands by rewetting activities. All right, why is it so important then to protect the peatlands? Yeah, yeah. you have to know uh, we have uh, different problems. We have this uh, global warming problem, we have this pollution of surface waters with uh, nutrients and we do have this loss on biodiversity and, and these are all functions uh, which are fulfilled by peatlands or by pristine peatlands. So uh, we, ne we need this uh, kind of landscapes yeah, to, to do something for our landscape. Because they, they lock in carbon. They lack in carbon, they also lack in nutrients, and they are a place for very specific biodiversity. So there are only very few plant and animal species which are able to live under such harsh conditions. So they are, yeah. And what kind of plants and animals are able to live? Um, yeah, there are different species of mosses. There are sages, um, there are uh, such plants um, which even take their nutrients out from the air. The Drosophilia, for example, it is a special plant. Um, um, so, yeah, the problem is the, the water logging of soils, the low pH and uh, the nutrient deficiency that only few plant species are able to survive under these conditions. All right, we want to take a look at a map that shows the countries with the largest peatlands. Now, as you see there, they are located mostly in the northern hemisphere. Now, does destroying them have the same impact as destroying tropical rainforests? Yeah, uh, they are even more important than rainforests for um, the greenhouse gas release because you have to know that they are stored carbon since several thousands of years. And um, altogether, although only 3% of land surface are covered by peatlands, they store 30% of total carbon and they store twice as much as all forests together. And if we now drain a peatland, all this carbon or a part or major part of this carbon will be released to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, this is a problem. It is an absolute problem. Um, and so it is bad for the environment, reduces biodiversity. What measures are being taken then to protect these peatlands? Um, the first we can do as uh, private persons is to avoid buying this um, gardening substrates, yeah, which is harvested in, in the still intact peatlands of the Baltic region. And um, we, um, yeah. So avoid buying, buying these commercial peat soils. Yeah, so uh, what we can do, we, we have to look for alternatives um, as private persons and uh, as governments, uh, we can uh, develop restoration programs. And this is uh, uh, the case here in some of the states in Germany. They have special plans to restore peatlands, to restore this uh, important ecological function as carbon sinks and nutrient sinks and so on. So it's important to look towards the alternatives. Okay, well, Dominic Jacques, we thank you very much for this conversation today. Yeah. Okay.